I'm Tangie with Foreclosures Daily. We're a nationwide lead provider. We provide leads to investors, realtors, attorneys, and just your basic first time home buyer. We've been in the business since 2004. And since then, we've been the internet's number one destination for the most detailed and timely information out there. I'm Tangie Cousins. I've been with them since they opened the doors. I've been with Foreclosures Daily since 2004, and I've helped many investors realtors and attorneys grow their business and increase their revenues. And I teach the do's and don'ts of marketing and unique marketing techniques on how to use our leads, what to say when you're marketing, what not to say, things like that, how often to mail. We give you, we pack a lot of punch for you guys and give you a lot of tools necessary to help you be successful. So not only when you get our list, do you get access to leads, you get access to a lot of free training as well. And this is one of them. We typically do a training the first Tuesday or Wednesday of the month. And it's usually around anywhere from 5.30, 6 o'clock, you know, Eastern Standard Time. How we are different, all of our leads are real estate attached and they're weekly and fresh. That means 300 people will file, let's say, probate or divorce in one week. Maybe only 15 or so will have property. Other companies are going to give you all 300. I'm just going to give you the 15 or 20 that have real estate. Most companies we found are quarterly, so you're getting very old leads. And by the time you get to them, they're gone, old, and sold. We understand the importance of having fresh data that's physically farmed for real estate. And just some of the leads that we do, we do probate, free probate, inheritance, code violation, eviction, and divorce. So that's every single Wednesday, you guys are going to have brand spanking new leads to go after. Probates and pre-probates by far, guys, are honestly some of the best leads nationwide you will ever get. They have the most equity. They typically don't mind taking a discount and they're extremely motivated to sell. People are almost always 60 and 70 years old when they lose their parents. So they typically do not want the property and you end up with a very motivated seller and you can usually get the properties for deeply discounted wholesale sale pricing. Just had somebody make $80,000 on wholesaling a probate lead in Hillsborough County. And like a month before that, somebody made over a hundred grand. People are making a killing on these leads, guys. Code violations are really good too. You're dealing with grown up grass, overgrown trash and debris it means the properties are typically not being maintained. So that becomes a really good lead as well. Evictions, you're dealing with a lot of tired landlords. And guys, we have a max of 25 leads a week for one county, one list. I know that sounds like a small amount of leads, but when you work these types of leads, you're going to get a small group of people, but you're going to yield massive responses, guys, massive revenues to work in these types of leads. The competition is real minimal, especially with probate and pre-probate. A lot of people have a lack of knowledge when you work these types of leads and they think, oh, you know, I don't want to work probates. It's too soon after somebody passes and, you know, um, you have to wait for the whole probates to finish before you buy. Guys, that is not true. In most counties and states, you can purchase almost right away. Even if the judge um, hasn't, you know, the judge typically will sign off on the property. Even if the summary administration has not been filed, they can file like an affidavit of heirship. The judge will typically sign off on the property relatively quickly. So it's not this huge, long process like people think. But because people think that, they won't work it. Guys, you get a lot of bonuses when you purchase the leads through us. You get postcards, you get letters, you get a six-step mailing campaign. We even mail you, physically snail mail you, probate real estate sales 101. And it's written by the author, uh, Kevin Sales. You can actually you can actually find that on Kindle too. When you purchase the leads at Foreclosures Daily, we send you this book and we actually know the author. So we did a webinar um, of him teaching the seven ways to make money with probate real estate investing. We'll share that with you too. Guys, we give you deeply discounted rates for purchasing um, the, these products through these companies. Like this one company that does the mailers for you, they only charge 38 to 42 cents with postage to send your postcards. Most postcard companies will charge a dollar to a dollar 20 to send that postcard with the actual street view of the property. People are getting massive response rates with these. The national average response rates like a half to one and a half percent. I literally have people getting three, five, 10, and 15% response rates with these types of leads. 
Also, if you want to do more of a personal touch, we have marketing by hand. Guys, they do an awesome job and they actually do everything by hand. It's a little more expensive, but you're getting that personal touch and handwritten letters with these types of leads are very, very, very good. Some of the bonuses, like I said, that you get are right here. We give you phone scripts. We even write an email to send to the attorney for you. Like we even write the email for you that you can send to the attorney expressing interest in the said property. So that, the postcard, Cards, the letters, a skip tracing company with deeply discounted, reduced rates. So we give you webinar trainings and every month we have a nationwide speaker throughout the nation to teach you free content for absolutely nothing, such as the one coming on tonight. And guys, I'm going to tell you about our bonuses right now because the webinar is going to be cut so short. I want you to know that for anybody who stays on this webinar till the absolute and we're going to be giving some good bonuses away. You're going to get a free county just for purchasing leads and being on this webinar. We can tell if you've been on the webinar the whole entire time. So make sure you stay till the very end because anybody who purchases a six month subscription or a year subscription is going to get a free county. So you can purchase probate or pre-probate or inheritance or code violation. One of these lists for at least six months or the year and you do get a free county just for being on this webinar tonight and staying till the very end. Guys, thank you so much. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put Lawrence on immediately. And while I stop sharing my screen, he's gonna start sharing his. Guys, let me tell you a little bit about him. I personally had the honor of knowing Lawrence personally for many, many years now. Um, he actually runs Go Rhea. It's you know the the uh, real estate meeting over there in uh, Altamont Springs, and he'll tell you a little bit about that, I'm sure. Guys, since 2003, he's been investing, and he's bought and sold over 1,000 properties since 2003. And he's actually wrote a real estate investing book called The Art of Acquisition. Guys, without further ado, I'd love to go ahead and introduce you to nonetheless Mr. Lawrence Malloy. So glad you were able to get on tonight. Go ahead and show your video and unmute yourself, Lawrence. Hey there. How are you, buddy? There we go. Here we go. Got it working out. What's going on, guys? How are you doing? Thanks for being on tonight. We really, really appreciate you. We waited for years to get you on one of our webinars. He finally said yes, and here he is, Lawrence Malloy in the flesh. And I'm gonna let you take it from here, buddy. We appreciate you so much. And guys, Lawrence has been using our leads for years now, and he's had great success on foreclosure daily leads. He probably don't wanna tell you that. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the last thing he needs is competition, right? No, no, not at all. So, uh, you know, obviously, uh, one of the fortunate things, Tangie, first and foremost, I wanted to say thank you for having me on here. Thank you for allowing me to spread my message to your audience. And yes, indeed, I do use leads from foreclosures daily. I have for a long time now, a few years. Uh, funny story is when I first got started in the business, I used foreclosures daily leads 20 years ago. And I uh, went for a period of time where I wasn't using them just because we we're using other various marketing methods. And as of several years ago now, I started using them again and we're closing a lot of deals. Uh, but there's two things. One is the information, the data. And then the other thing is knowing how to work that data, knowing how to work a lead, knowing how to convert a motivated seller to actually saying, hey, we want to invest in you and sell you are property. Uh, so there's a couple things there, but yes, absolutely, Tangi, your data, we close deals using your data. So I appreciate you having me on here. That's why actually why I hopped on here is because uh, anytime I'm using someone's service, or um, something, one of their um, services or whatever, I have no problem hopping on and supporting them. So that's why I'm on here today. So thanks again for that. Thanks a lot, Lawrence. I'll let you take it from here. All right, have, cool. a, have, a, so, have a great evening, guys. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Sounds good. So welcome, 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 everybody. Uh, my name is Lawrence Malloy. We're going to hop right into it. Uh, our My presentation tonight is uh, something that's a little bit interesting and, and it's different. And the, the reason why I say it's different and interesting because everyone wants to talk to you about how do you find a property? How do you lock up a deal? How do you wholesale, flip a property, do all this other things? But at the end of the day, once you're an investor, the sooner you understand about leveraging different, different things in your business, um, you will understand that. It, it, in order to grow a business, it's going to take people. It's going to take you bringing on the right people into your business. And there's different things you can leverage when it comes to business. 
One thing that people leverage is other people's money. One thing that people leverage now, the second thing is technology. A lot of times people use modern day technology to uh, you know grow their business. And the third thing that you can use as leverage is other people. And that's what we're gonna talk about tonight is we're gonna talk about leveraging other people and how you leverage, how you bring in the right person to help grow your organization. So um, a lot of people on here are, are solopreneurs, meaning you're just getting into the business or you're in the business and you're trying to figure out how to go from me or me and like my husband, wife, my kid, whatever, and how do we grow this and scale this business? Um, one of the things that I'm passionate about is you actually owning a business at some point and not just having a high paying job. It's very, very important. A lot of people think they own a business, but what they don't understand is if you go away for a month and come back, is your business going to be up and running or can you actually take a vacation or do you ultimately just have a high paying job where when you're there, it's making money. If you're not there, it's not making money. The true test of that, one of my mentors, Kent Clothier, he says, if you can go away for two months and literally leave, don't tell anybody you're going away, just leave and come back. And if your company has more money in the bank account than when you left, then you actually own a business. If you don't, meaning that it takes you running the business, being there with horsepower, then chances are you don't own a business, you own a high paying job. And the idea is to get you to where you're actually owning and running an actual business and you move from the hustler role to the CEO role. And that's what we're trying to get everyone to just do or open up your mind, even if you don't feel like you're there right this second. At some point, as you are doing transactions and as you're building up momentum and you start feeling like you're pulled in a lot of different directions where you're like, this is just too much for one person, uh, whether you're a wholesaler and you're having to do all of the marketing, you're having to talk to all the clients, you're having to submit all the offers, you're having to do all the paperwork, you're having to do all the dispositions yourself, you're having to push out the marketing and file the taxes and everything else that it takes to really be running a business. If you're doing all of that and you're feeling overwhelmed, there's gonna be two things that happen. One is you're gonna potentially get burned out. And number two is you're just gonna feel overwhelmed and you're not going to wanna do the business. So if you understand this early on, the idea is to, Get ramped up and understand the business, but as quickly as you can, you want to start bringing some people on and firing yourself from some of the, the MWAs that we, as we call them, minimum wage activities and start leveraging other people to help you out. So uh, I'm not sure if anybody knows if you want to answer right in the chat box, but uh, I'm just trying to get a gauge of who's on here. What do you think is the first position you should hire for um, as you are kind of getting out there in your entrepreneurial journey with real estate investing? Is it an acquisition rep? Is it a disposition rep? Is it like, who do you think is the right person that you'd want to hire starting off? Um, acquisition rep, Debbie, we have admin. Keep on chiming in, post it in the chat. That's interesting. Keep on, keep on chiming in. And while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and roll into this presentation um, a little bit about me so that you guys have a, a better understanding of who you guys are spending the next hour with. Uh, my name is Lawrence Malloy, and I'm the owner of uh, a multi-million dollar investment firm out of Tampa, Florida called Ethical Homebuyers. It's my 21st year in business, so I've been doing this very thing for 21 years. Uh, I'm a national speaker, consultant to high-level investors that want to scale their business, take it to the next level. I also own the Greater Orlando Real Estate Investors Association. I'm on the board of directors for one of the top masterminds in the entire country. It's called the Boardroom Mastermind. If you guys get a chance, look it up. We're, uh, we're having our quarterly meeting actually next week and in less than a week. I'll be in Costa Rica at one of our uh, quarterly meetings. Um, I wrote a book on real estate investing called The Art of the Acquisition. I bought and sold over more than a thousand properties from as low as 3,000 to as high as $2 million. 
And I've been coined the acquisition artist because I've been able to lock up deals a multitude number of ways and been able to negotiate and put these deals together that are not all cash deals. We got seller finance deals. We got subject to, we got everything all across the board. And uh, I've been able to do this over the past 21 years and, and have quite a bit of success. So uh, that's the reason why Tanji asked me to come on today. And that's the reason why I'm standing in front of you guys uh, or I'm sitting in front of you guys on the computer today. So I hope you guys lock in. I think there's around 45, 50 people on this call. And uh, one thing I will assure you of, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper and lock in because I'm pouring into you guys tonight. I want to make sure that you guys are taking notes. I want to make sure that you guys leave here with some actionable items, stuff that you can say, hmm, I may be able to do this in my business or let me consider this and let me start working on this immediately. The difference in people that are actually going to make something of their time tonight while you guys are on here, the biggest difference uh, with the people that are going to do something is the action takers. If you get off of this webinar tonight and you start taking some notes and start creating a, day, a game plan of what you're going to do in order to start implementing some of these things, then that's going to be the difference. And if you start taking action, the people that will just sit on this webinar and not do anything afterwards, it's going to be very, very hard for you to make traction in this business. So lock in, grab a pen, grab a paper, and I'm going to be going hard for the next um, the next hour. Okay. So how do you know it's time to hire? Uh, if you're an entrepreneur and you're busy, like essentially, like if you're super busy doing everything and you feel like you can't, you're, you're basically treading water, then it may be time to hire somebody. Um, if there's always uh, something that needs your attention, right? There's a lot of things. So one thing about my business is I will go away from time to time, whether it's a mastermind, whether I'm on vacation, whether I have to attend to some of my uh, other businesses that are real estate related. And my main business, my investment firm still operates whether I'm here or whether I'm not here. Okay. It's really, really important. There's not always something that needs my attention because my team is handling it. And that's what I want to introduce you guys to is introduction into scaling your business. Uh, there are going to be small and tedious tasks that need to be done. It's time to hire uh, because there's always small and tedious tasks that need to be done. As you start to have success and bring revenue, you'll need employees to keep up with the demand. And my first hire, I looked at these questions and answer. It's not just an admin assistant. It's an executive assistant. And what I'm going to go over today is I'm going to go over all of the things that an executive assistant does, which is different than an admin ex assistant. Let's see, Beth, I like acquisition, so I would hire a uh, dispo rep. I can't see the chats, phone answer. I do not know. Oh, someone to answer the phones. Nope. So we're going to go over all of this stuff, guys. So there's actually some pretty good um, insight to that. But an executive assistant is what we're going to talk about because an executive assistant encompasses everything that you guys think that this person should be doing. An executive assistant should be able to handle that. And I'm going to show you all of the different jobs and things that uh, they can do for you and that they will do for you. And we'll dig deep. We're going to get very granular, get into the weeds of some of the things that my executive assistant, uh, Michelle, does for me. All right. I'm going to tell you guys a funny story. Um, the reason, the, the way I came to with this presentation is that my executive assistant, Michelle, um, I wanted to talk to people about scaling their business. So I told Michelle, or I asked Michelle, I said, hey, Michelle, can you write up? a, um, can you send me over an email with all of the different things that you do in my business? And she says, okay. And she went ahead and emailed me and she sent me a document that had about, um, this is no bullshit. She sent me over a document that had about a hundred different things that she does for me in my business. And I went through it item by item. And I was like, holy cow. I didn't even realize that she does all of this stuff, but she listed everything out 
And that's what helped me put together this presentation. And then right after that, I said, Michelle, you know what? After reading this, uh, well done because you get a raise. So I ended up giving her a raise and that's how all of that went about. But she wrote down all of this stuff and I went ahead and uh, it made me realize, give me some insights, all the things that she does. Since I did this presentation several years ago, of course, she's taken on a lot more things and she's not doing everything at once. The idea is that she knows how to do everything so that when I need her to do something, she's not trying to figure it out. She, over the last five years, we've been able to build upon her skill set and keep on teaching her new things. So we're going to dig right into some of the things that she does for this organization. Okay. So she does miscellaneous and administrative duties. She oversees all the administrative duties in the office. So anything that has administrative tasks to it, she handles, whether it's answering the phones, uh, maintains office supplies and reorders when necessary, processing incoming mail. Uh, I'm not even sure if you guys realize how long it takes to open up your own mail. This is something that whether it takes you five minutes a day and at the end of the week, you spend 25 minutes to half an hour. And then you times that by 52 weeks out of the year, you know, how many hours are you spending just opening up mail five minutes a day? And I know it takes longer than that, but this is something that I haven't opened up mail in years. Okay. Uh, she's also a notary. So she's responsible for notarizing all the documents in the office. Uh, when I do closings, I never go to a title company. Closings happen where the title company will send me the docs and I go ahead and sign docs right at my desk. Michelle can notarize something if she needs to. And then we go ahead and overnight it back to the title company. But I'm not wasting time, effort, energy, driving. Funds get wired right into my account. So having a notary in-house for not only that, any other documents that you need is amazing. So an executive assistant, typically if uh, they are not already a notary, then you can just, uh, what I would recommend is paying whatever their fee is and then just going ahead and uh, paying for them to get their notary. And now you have one right in the office, okay? It saves a lot of time. And this is what we're gonna be talking about, guys. So the reason why I'm going over this presentation is because I'm passionate about time. Time is money. Time is our most precious, precious asset. So if I can buy back some of my time and spend my time doing things that are important to me, whether it's revenue generating activities or whether it's spending time with my family, spending time with my son, spending time doing things that I really want to be doing versus processing mail, opening up mail, answering incoming calls, doing all this tedious stuff. That to me is wealth when you can be doing what you want and you don't have to be doing all of the stuff that it requires when you're kind of just getting into business. I think there's a time for that in the beginning and for you to really understand your business and understand all of the different roles and things that need to be done. But as soon as you understand it, it's important that you immediately put a game plan into place on, hey, how am I going to bring someone on? What's the structure I need to pay someone? What's the structure I need to lay out in order for me to bring someone on so I can spend more time doing things that matter, which is locking up big deals or spending time with family and doing stuff like that uh, where someone else can be doing some of these tedious activities and you can start buying your time back. Some people feel like because they're busy, that feels good. If you're busy, you're making money, but busy doesn't always equal revenue. A lot of this stuff I'm going to talk to you today absolutely can be outsourced. And I know that because I'm absolutely outsourcing it and it's going along fine. Matter of fact, what I have realized is that my assistant can actually do things a lot better than me, but because we're a bunch of narcissistic A-type personalities, we think we're the best at everything. And the reality is, is that's just not the case. People, there are people out there that enjoy doing, being a supporting role a lot better than we are. And they enjoy this. This is where they thrive. Like my Michelle doesn't thrive in being the CEO. What she thrives in is being able to support the CEO. And she is just very, very good. And it's about finding the right personality type with the right skill sets. And I'll tell you, how I found Michelle and all that other stuff. But uh, let's dig into some more of the duties that she does 
or things that she does for my organization. So she provides uh, any back office support that's needed, prepare and update documents for weekly staff meetings. So on Mondays, we have staff meetings. I meet with all of my departments. I meet with my uh, project manager to go over all the different projects we have going on. I meet with my sales manager to see how the marketing is going and things like that. I meet with my acquisition reps to see how they're going and to you know be able to give them some insight or some tactical tips on things that they could be doing. So I meet with all of my departments on Monday mornings and she prepares all of my weekly documents for staff meetings. So every project that we have going on, whether I have 20 projects, there's an update on every one. So she will meet with my project manager, get all the notes together for where the projects are at so that we can bang out the meetings and we know exactly what's going on for each project that we have going on. But I don't prepare that document. She prepares that document. Okay. Um, also, the difference between an administrative assistant and an executive assistant is an executive assistant is typically like 85% business and then 15% personal. So if I need her to run any personal errands, uh, dry cleaning, if I need her to run to the bank for something, if I need her to pick up some lunch, if I need her to do any of these things, she will be that person that knocks that out and you know runs any personal errands. So that's a very, very important thing. The biggest difference between an admin assistant and an executive assistant is it is expected that an executive assistant is going to do some personal stuff. If I need my son picked up, if I need a ride to the airport, any of those things is right in the typical job duties of an executive assistant. So as I mentioned, dry cleaning, picking up food for lunches, gift for clients, things like that. It's it's par for, par for the course, okay? Also, uh, when I'm purchasing property, some of the things that my executive assistant does, and the reason why I'm reading all of these things out to you is for you guys to take notes and or take pictures. I'd rather you write it down because when you write it down, you're going to retain more of the information versus just taking a picture of the screen and not really going back to those pictures in a week from now or two weeks from now or forgetting the whole thing. If you write this stuff down, you're probably going to retain a little bit more and you'll probably go back to your notes versus a picture that's going to get lost in the sea of another thousand pictures that you have of everything else that you have going on, your kids, your family, selfies, and all that other you know stuff that's out there. So try to write some of this stuff down. And I'm telling you all these things because probably one of the biggest, one of the biggest uh, comments that I get when I'm talking to people about scaling their business is, uh, I don't know if I'm ready for an executive assistant. I don't know if I'm ready for an assistant. I, I don't know what they would actually do. And the reason why you don't know what they would do is because you don't know what you don't know. And that's okay. Like you haven't run a scaled out business. You haven't had all of this stuff comes up. But what I will tell you is when you are doing more business and you have more deals that are coming in and the more deals that are coming in, the more paperwork, the more things, the more closings, the more everything you have going on, the more clients you have to buy gifts for and everything else, it just pulls from your time. And what happens is most people will limit the amount of business they're doing based on them having to do all of this stuff. So you will actually start self-sabotaging yourself from doing more business because you don't want to do more of the tedious stuff that it takes in order to see those deals from start to finish and do it properly. So people start self-sabotaging themselves. Oh, you know what? I can't do more than two deals at a time or I can't do more than three deals at the time. I just don't have the bandwidth. And what it is, it's a bunch of bullshit at the end of the day. What it is, is you not understanding how to grow, scale your business and leverage other people. And as I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about growing and scaling your business to this enormous organization. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. One, you can scale, you know, you know, fairly small and lean, just have a couple of extra people for years. I'm talking about for many years, maybe 13 years, 14 years, it was me and my executive assistant, and I was doing over a million dollars in business. Let that sink in a sec. So you don't need this big organization to do seven figures. And as you may add you, an executive assistant, and then I'll tell you what the next person is that I think you should hire. You can 
absolutely crush the game and do very, very well with a very small, or you can grow this thing to as big as you want. I know people that have, you know, 15 acquisition reps and they have a CFO, a CMO, they have all of the C-suite people and they have sales managers for each department. So it's really what you want to do, you know, but just kind of in the very beginning, we're talking about, hey, how do you go from solopreneur or how do you go from a very small organization and what's a very, very integral piece that you need to put into play in order for you to get the best bang for your buck, okay? We look at an executive assistant as a utility worker, meaning that utility workers, they do a lot of different positions. Everyone in my organization wears a lot of different hats. No one's just like, hey, this is all I do and that's it, especially my executive assistant. My executive assistant, she is an absolute beast and that's what I want for you guys as well, okay? So let's go into some of the other things that she does. Uh, regarding purchasing um, of the properties, when I purchase assets, she obtains uh, lawn maintenance. So all the properties need lawn maintenance, obtains pool service. If the if the home has a pool, I have, I, mean, I can't even tell you how many houses I have pools right now. I just cut all the uh, checks for the pool service and it's quite a bit of money. But I don't obtain the pool service. Once we know we're purchasing a property, she contacts a local pool service company, gets all of that set up. Uh, she turns on electricity, turns on the water, coordinates with the seller to obtain the key and secure the property at the time of closing, and completes and process any HOA applications or requirements for purchase. This is another big one. Those HOA applications sometimes can be a pain in the butt. You got to jump through all these requirements, send them all this stuff, and at the end of the day, it's time out of your day that takes away from locking up deals or meeting with potential sellers, which as the owner, that should be your superpower. Um, so anytime that uh, HOA applications have to be completed, she takes care of all of this. Okay, uh, she also does transaction coordination on the purchase. So um, she is a point person for all property related activities. She's point person for oversight of contracts throughout the process. So once the contract is signed, it gets passed over to Michelle and she processes it through. Uh, she intakes contracts for both purchase and sale. So if I'm buying something and when I'm selling something, she communicates with clients, agents, lenders, title agencies, uh, anyone that's involved in the transaction, Michelle's the one that coordinates with them. And when I say clients and agents, Let's say um, we're doing a transaction and sometimes, most of the time we buy direct from direct to seller, but there's a lot of times where we will buy from real estate agents and then she has to coordinate all of that with the agent. If uh, we're selling a property, she um, you know, coordinates with the lenders, uh, title agencies, whatever else. Uh, she ensures all contracts and addendums are properly completed and received prior to the closing date. I can't tell you how many times that as real estate investors, you are so busy going from one thing to the next thing to the next thing that you think you have a contract, you think it's signed, but you really don't go over everything properly. And you realize, holy shit, I'm missing a signature and a mission initials, which makes that contract not valid. So now you have to go back to the seller and say, hey, we forgot some initials and some signatures. And hopefully no one's gotten in their ear uh, from when you initially signed it until now, and then they realize that you don't have a valid contract. Ask me how I know it's happened before, right? So uh, very, very important that you have someone that is can slow down a sec and make sure you have all the proper uh, I's dotted and the T's crossed, all right? Uh, another thing is coordinate with the title company regarding the closing. So she basically makes contact title company, sends all the documents over for if I'm doing a closing, she prints up all the documents, uh, gets them over to me. And then I just sit at my desk, sign uh, all my signatures, things like that. And then she takes care of getting it back over the title company and making all of that happen. But all of that is time, time, time. Okay. Uh, she also schedules follow-ups. Uh, works with the team to ensure a smooth transaction process for the sellers and the buyers. So the one thing that's cool about this is even as, as owners, sometimes we're so far up at the top that we get someone, a seller or buyer that's at, that asks us a question 
that seems silly to us because of our position in the company. We're like, I can't believe this person's asking me this, but to have that buffer, to have a transaction coordinator that understands that when you're talking to buyers and sellers, like this is a client facing business and speaks to them in a way that eases their mind. And sometimes as the owner, sometimes we can come off a little harsh just because we're thinking of a bunch of different things. We're thinking of 50 million things. And then someone asks us a very simple question. And sometimes we can come off a little, we can come off a little harsh. So uh, she works with the team to ensure a smooth transaction process for the sellers and buyers. Okay. During the rehab process. <clears throat> My girl, Michelle, schedules the walkthrough of the property. So essentially how this goes down is um, before we start any project, um, we will purchase the asset. And then I typically go over there with my contractor and Michelle. And we have to schedule a walkthrough. We schedule a walkthrough so that I can just, I literally go there one time. Sometimes I don't even go to the property. We can do it off of pictures. Uh, but I'll go over there one time and we do a one-time walkthrough. My contractor's there. Michelle's taking the notes so that we can write up the scope. And I just point out, yep, needs carpet, needs paint. We need this kitchen redone, these cabinets redone. We need this countertop and we'll walk through the property one time. But she sets all of that up. Uh, she creates a scope of, scope of work with a contractor, uh, provides independent contractor's agreement to ensure that it's signed prior to any work being started. I know out there right now, a lot of people are missing this step. And this step is making sure you have a independent contractor's agreement that is signed by the contractor prior to any work starting, okay? Um, I'll tell you this, for everyone that's on this call, I own the Orlando, uh, Greater Orlando Real Estate Investor Association. It's called Go Rhea. And we meet on the fourth Thursday of every month. And one of my mentors, Robin Thompson, Years and years ago, I'd say maybe, I don't even know, 10, 14 years ago, somewhere around there, uh, Robin said, hey, uh, are you using an independent contractor's agreement? I said, no, what is that? And she's like, you need to have this in place so that um, you can protect yourself from contractors. Uh, it just so happens that Robin is going to be my guest presenter at this upcoming month's RIA. So this upcoming month uh, RIA meeting, it's in Altamont Springs in Orlando. And if you're able to come, she's going to be presenting on basically uh, how to rehab properties. She's going to come in and she's the one I was in the business for nine years. And she's the one that really taught me how to rehab properties and how to control your contractors and make sure that they're not getting over on you. And one of the ways that we do it is using this independent contractors agreement. So She's going to be talking about that and she's coming. Let me just look at this date. They will be there. One, two, three, four. Our next meeting is on April 25th. So if you're in the Altamont Springs area and you go to gorea.com, you can RSVP for that meeting. It's free for first time guests. Most people end up getting an annual membership. It's only like 159 bucks for an annual membership. You can come to all of our meetings. But Robin, the one that got me on this independent contract agreement that has saved me so many times, uh, she will be presenting this month. So that is a fun fact for everyone to RSVP and get signed up. Once again, that's gorea.com, G-O-R-E-I-A.com. All right. So we prepare that. Uh, she also works with the project manager and performs oversight and perform oversight of the process to ensure that timelines and work is being completed as scheduled. So she understands exactly where the process should, the rehab process should be. So she makes sure when she's talking to the uh, project manager that the process, the project is moving along. Um, she maintains details regarding the rehab of the property as well. Anything that comes up, um, hey, we're this far along in the process. They just installed cabinets in our weekly meetings. She'll take notes and she, you know, documents everything and where we're at in the process. Okay. Uh, when well, we're getting the property to list. So if we buy a property and we fix it up, we rehab it, and now we're going to sell it. She also oversees all of that busy paperwork stuff, which is ensures the property is cleaned. Final walkthrough repairs have been completed. She obtains quotes and schedules staging because we stage all of our properties. Uh, she schedules professional pictures. So calls up the photographer 
schedules them to go out there, take all the pictures. She prepares the listing paperwork in accordance with the, uh, you know, I have my real estate license with Remax. So she makes sure that all of the proper paperwork is filled out. And then she inputs the listing pictures and any supplemental documents, addendums, anything into MLS. So all of you guys that are doing all of this yourself, shame, shame, shame. You should not be doing this stuff. When people ask me, well, I don't know if I can afford an executive assistant. I'm like, I don't know how you can't afford an executive assistant. If you don't do it sooner than later, then you spend all your time doing busy work and you never get yourself out of the rat race. The sooner you hire someone, the sooner that you can focus on locking up an extra deal or two or a couple of deals, which is going to far outweigh what your executive assistant is going to cost you. And you're going to have a way better quality of life because you're not doing all of the busy stuff that it requires in order to operate this business properly. Very, very, very important. Uh, give me one sec. I think some questions came in. When you say incoming calls, I'm assuming general business calls or she answer inbound marketing calls too. William, I'm going to stop right here and answer this question. Um, Yo, Bell, I know you'll definitely be at the next meeting. Great to have you on here, bud. Uh, William, to answer your question, so she answers all incoming calls. So um, when I first was going, when it was just me and my executive assistant, uh, years ago. Um, this is actually a funny story. She, I taught my executive assistant, the way that I worked it is anybody that called in incoming calls um, for leads. So I taught, I used to have a lead sheet, which I still do. And when people called in, I would just basically go down all the questions on the lead sheet. Hey, what's your name? What's the address, property address, all this stuff. Why are you looking to sell the property? You know, tell me some of the condition about the property, some of the things going on with it. And I'll ask them how much you owe on it, how much you want for it, all this good stuff. Then um, I was like, I'm not going to pass this off to my executive assistant because no one can build rapport as good as I can. No one can get all of the information out of these people like I can. No one can convert this deal like I can. And I used to always think that dumb shit. It was literally the dumbest shit you can think about about how you're the best at everything. And what you realize in business is, one, you're not the best at everything. You're typically really, really good at maybe a couple skill sets, but in business, there's just so many different things. You're not the best at everything. People are just control freaks and you have a hard time letting go. Another thing you gotta realize is sometimes done is better than perfect. So as long as it's getting done, it doesn't need to be perfection. And, um, you know, if, if someone can do something as good as I can, 80% as good as I can, that other 20% is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. So what I, what I realized this, and especially when it came to the incoming lead intake where we had, I spent money in marketing, like I was paying money to get the phones ringing where people call and said, Hey, you know, I have a property I'm interested in selling. And I thought, hey, no one's going to do this lychee better than me. I'm the best. And the reality is, is my assistant is a sweet voice on the other end of the phone. Very friendly, very polite, very, um, very, very good at building rapport. And what I realized is that my executive assistants would do better at getting the information off of the lead sheet than I would do because their whole thing is like, hey, I'm just the admin assistant I just need to get these questions answered. And if the owner's interested, he'll give you a call back. But let me go ahead and let me get all these questions answered. And I'll make sure I put this on his desk. And anytime they ask him anything that was challenging, hey, I'm not sure. I'm the admin assistant. I'll jot down that question here. And if they're interested in the property, we'll, they'll give you a call back. And that's how we set up all of these calls. And we did a lot in business, over a million dollars a year consistently in business. And it was my ad, my executive assistant taking down all of the information on the lead sheet. Once they took it down, they said, hey, if they're interested, they'll give you a call back. I would go grab those lead sheets. You would have them all stacked up on my desk. And then I would go through them. And if we were close on any of the, the numbers, then I would call those people back and try to work and get them down. I mean, I would call everyone back. Because even if we're far off, I would call and explain different things like that. But the ones that were a little bit more warmer, 
I was calling back first, but that's how that worked out. So she answers all the calls in general. Now I have acquisition reps that answer all of the incoming marketing phone calls, marketing, meaning that we pay money to, we spend marketing dollars to get people to call in my acquisition reps answer the phone. Uh, now, however, back in the day when it was me plus one, uh, she was the one that was, I taught her to answer. And what happens is whenever you have an executive assistant, no one comes in knowing how to do all of this stuff. And that's the biggest misconception, right? No one comes in knowing how to answer all the phones properly, build the rapport, do all of the marketing materials, do all of the transaction. No one knows how to do that. However, if you find someone with the right characteristics that you that's that has a great attitude with an eagerness to learn a willingness to learn and is a hard worker you can teach them how to do all of these other things and that's very very important for you to understand my executive says everyone asks me where'd you find michelle where'd you find michelle and i tell everyone i didn't find michelle i built michelle and what i mean by that is she had the right characteristics she had the right pedigree and then I taught her all of the things that she needed to do based on how I did them. And she picked up and learned. And now that's how she's able to do, you know, a hundred different things or knows all the things, but she's been with me for years now. And that's the thing. You find someone that's a hard worker, great attitude. That's a, that is, um, you know, eager to learn and you can work with them and build them up. And then you become a good leader and then they become your right-hand person, which is the person that is going to save you a lot of time, effort, and energy. But you don't just hire someone. And Michelle, she actually worked for a lawyer. She worked in a law firm for like the prior nine years before she was with me. So she wasn't even in the real estate business. And my first thought process, and it was the scariest hire, I'll tell you this, uh, I had to pay her more than I paid anybody else up to this point. And it was a scary hire, but it was the, I'm glad I took the leap because it's been the hire that has changed my business and changed my life, right? And I've hired many, many other people since then and have a scaled out business, everything else. But Michelle is an integral role. Michelle's my executive assistant. She's an integral role in my business. But uh, I figured, you know, if she came from working in a law firm and that's very detail oriented, like if you mess up something in someone's law case, or I know attorneys are high maintenance of shit. And that was very, very important. I said, if she can, if she can uh, be an executive assistant for someone like that, an attorney, then she can definitely be my executive assistant. Now, if you ask her, she may think that maybe I'm more high maintenance than the attorneys, but that's, that's up for discussion. So we, uh, we won't go into that much, that much further, but yes, you can absolutely have her answering the incoming marketing calls. If, Let's keep it moving. Um, some other stuff that she's able to do. When I sell off the property, she cancels all the lawn maintenance, pool service, electricity, turns off the water, upstates MLS, prints closing documents. Um, there's transaction coordination when I purchase properties. And then there's transaction coordination when I sell properties. So two totally different parts of the business. And that's very important because you have to train someone, hey, what to say, what not to say when you're purchasing properties what to say, what not to say when you're selling off properties because you're dealing with a different clientele. How we buy properties is not how we sell properties. How we buy properties from you know sellers, uh, direct to seller agents or wholesalers or whoever buying them from, um, we do not uh, sell them the same way. So it's important that Michelle or whoever you're doing your transaction coordination can understand how to wear the different hats and the different roles that we play, okay? Speaking of buying properties from wholesalers, uh, if you're on this call and you are a wholesaler and you're looking to sell assets in the Tampa Bay area, I buy properties in six counties. We've been in business 21 years, buying a lot of properties from a lot of different people. If you have properties in the Tampa Bay area, whether it's, uh, I buy in six counties, so it's Hillsborough, Polk County, which is as far as I go east from Tampa, Polk County. Uh, I think all the way up to Davenport, we buy in Pasco County, which is north of Tampa, Pinellas to the west, and then Sarasota and Manatee County to the south of us. If you have a property in any one of these areas, please send it over to me, and then we can take a look at it, evaluate it immediately, and, and uh, try to 
uh, either uh, meet your number or we'll go ahead and present you with an offer of what we potentially can pay. And maybe you can, we can work it out. Or sometimes people go back and renegotiate with the seller and try to get that price down. But the best way to find me, I'm going to tell you this right now and I'll repeat it at the end, but write this down is on Instagram. If you're on this call, go ahead and hop onto Instagram and give me a follow and then you can direct message me. And I can't tell you how many time and time and time again, I've bought properties where people shot me a direct message. I passed along to my acquisition reps and we've ended up purchasing that asset. My Instagram handle is the T-H-E, my first name, Lawrence, L-A-W-R-E-N-C-E, Malloy, M-A-L-L-O-Y. So it's the Lawrence Malloy right on Instagram. Uh, and then you can direct message me. It's like having my telephone number. All right. So uh, transaction coordination. Uh, Michelle also oversees that. She's the point, the point person for all property related activities, uh, oversight of contracts throughout the process, intake of contracts on both uh, purchase and sale. Communicate with clients, agents, lenders, title agencies. She ensures all contracts and addendums are properly completed, coordinates with the title company regarding the closing and then schedules any follow-ups and works with the team to ensure a smooth transaction, okay? Short-term and long-term rentals. I own uh, several uh, luxury short-term rentals out at the beaches and some in Tampa. And uh, she helps oversee this and manage these properties as well. So um, she helps oversee my long-term rentals. Uh, these are not short-term, these are long-term. We have tenants in there and she helps oversees that. She's a customized and built automated CRM to track long-term rental properties. She prepares and lists the properties for rent. She sometimes set up showings. We have um, automated lock boxes on these doors, but she sets everything up. There's a specific uh, processes that we have so we don't actually have to go to the showings. Uh, we have uh, processes and procedures in place. And then she works with pro uh, prospective tenants so that they can go through the background check and uh, all the other checks that we do on them. And then she processes the application, takes intake of deposits, lease and, and move in paperwork and uh, schedules any miscellaneous repairs. So this is for my long-term rental properties on the short-term rental side. Um, she, you know, tracks everything, creates uh, our guest books. Uh, she creates a listing and maintains the properties for short-term rental websites She's responsible for troubleshooting uh, any issues, maintaining electronics, ring cameras, entry locks, TV setup, stuff like that. She stocks and maintains supplies at the properties. She works hand in hand with the cleaners. She actually oversees the cleaners and is their direct point of contact. Uh, like I said, hire, train, oversee cleaners, pool maintenance, lawn maintenance, pest control, utilities, electric cable, all of that stuff. If you're running a short-term rental business or have a house or whatever, if you don't have someone, an executive assistant, this is all time that's coming out of your time, okay? It's very, very important. You can get all these business up and running, but if you don't have the right infrastructure to help run and maintain these businesses, you're just gonna be spinning your wheels and get burnt out, okay? Uh, she also uh, oversees any maintenance and repairs, so she'll schedule someone to come out if we have any type of maintenance or repairs that need to be done. And then in charge of all guest complaints and ensuring that issues are resolved, okay? Um, let's see, tracking properties. She um, has worked to help build a customized uh, CRM. She tracks all properties uh, that we have from inception to completion, maintains all documents for the property, maintains all accounting transactions, payables, receivables, contractors, vendors, HOAs, utilities, companies, et cetera. So, I want to make sure people understand that she's not doing all of these things at once. She knows how to do all of these things. So as stuff comes up, she's knocking it out like a champ. So none of this stuff is like, hey, all of this stuff is done, has to be done every single day. This is like, if we have this thing going on, if we have this new transaction, there's processes and procedures in place. So everything gets knocked out fairly quickly. Okay. Um, for the RIA meeting, the Greater Orlando RIA meeting that I was telling you guys about, uh, she maintains the speakers, all of their information. She maintains, uh, oversees the meetings, accounts receivables and payables, uh, maintains the GoRio website. So if we have speakers, she posts all the speakers, all of our business vendors. If we have a monthly business vendor that provides the food, she handles all of that stuff. 
Um, we have someone else that run it that's running social media campaigns or that has been. Um, she used to do that when I first uh, created this presentation, but she obtains a venue, which we meet at um, the Shell Insurance Center on Douglas Avenue. But um, she will send off the check for that. Just all the things that are any type of administrative duties for Greater Orlando Rhea. She oversees that stuff, responsible for setup and cleanup, work with all the guest speakers, all of this stuff. So if you guys see these things popping up, I'll go back a screen, ensure speaker agreements are executed, works with the speakers to ensure they have all event details. Just a lot of a lot of time consuming stuff, right? So um, she also handles some of our accounts payable. We have a bookkeeper that comes in every single week on Thursdays. As a matter of fact, he'll be here tomorrow, Fred. He comes in here and she works hand in hand with him to make sure that our books are reconciled and that they have um, all of our invoices, checks are cut, things are paid. I'm not cutting checks. I will sign checks, but between Fred and Michelle, they handle all the checks as well. Uh, review uh, for duplicate invoices and ensure we're not paying uh, the vendor twice, ensures the invoices are priced accurately based on scope of work, prepares and process internal payroll, prepares invoices for employees, uh, writes and cut checks, submits for signature, uh, frantically does some of this. Every once in a while, she will, if it's an emergency, like we need a check midweek when Fred's not here, we typically only cut checks on Thursday, but if something comes up in emergency, then Michelle will go ahead and write, cut that check. She processes uh, the signed checks, uh, log all outgoing payments, scan and uh, copy of the checks and invoice for each property, handles all this stuff. And once again, it's busy stuff that uh, she thrives in this environment. She loves being the support to what we do here. Uh, stuff and mail outgoing payments, which there's a lot of them, unfortunately, but that's what it is when you run a business, okay? Accounts receivable. So everyone's always wondering, well, I don't know if I have enough work for an assistant. As you have an assistant, you start picking up more business. More business means there's more things that you're involved in doing. When there's more things that you're involved in doing, if you don't have a good support system infrastructure, it will fall through the cracks. And guess what? Your business will fail. Your business will get hurt. Because not only are you not going to be doing as much business, but people will start complaining. And that's never a good feeling. There's a reason why uh, we're members of the Better Business Bureau and we have an A plus rating with them for like the past 16 years is because, you know, whenever you're scaling a business, it's imperative that you have good processes and procedures, but then you also have a support staff in order to uh, see all of these things through. Okay. Uh, so she receives incoming payments. So if someone's paying us for something, she receives those checks, uh, automatic payment receipts, EFTs, ACH deposits, ensures all incoming payments are allocated to the correct property and GNL account. She works with Fred. Fred is the main person that uh, reconciles and does all the bookkeeping and journaling and everything. And Michelle works hand in hand to make sure that all of that is correct. Log incoming transactions, scan and save to each property's expense, business expense, work with bookkeeper to ensure all transactions are true and accurate and all charges are accounted for and approved. That's a big thing. I can't tell you how many times in business people think, oh, I need to make more money. I need to make more money. And the reality is, is you need to go deeper in your current business. And it's not just about top line revenue, guys. When we start talking about scaling business, everyone's worried about top line revenue. But I guarantee there's so much money that's lost or missed within your business that you're not even realizing. And that's a really, really big thing in, in business, especially in this business where people think I need to do more deals. And the reality is, is you don't have the right support system and stuff is falling through the cracks. More importantly, not stuff, but money is falling through the cracks. I guarantee if you don't have a good bookkeeper, then and your and your books aren't getting reconciled or your bank account's not getting reconciled, that you probably have some fraudulent transactions in there that you haven't even realized just because you're too busy focused on top line revenue. So these are just things that when people spend time with me, um, as I mentioned in the very beginning, I do consulting for a high level investors. High level means people that are looking to scale their business, that are looking to um, grow their business. 
and I consult with them. And these are things that we talk about in consulting. It's not just about top line. We talk about that, but most of the time business is lost uh, because you're not focused on the transactions and things that are going on within your business. And most people just don't know what they don't know. You get into this business because you're a hustler and you can create things. You're a good salesperson. You can lock up a deal. You can wholesale a deal. But to actually grow a business is a completely different skill set. So if you have some interest, if you're on this call and you have some interest of like, hey, how can I grow my business? I would be interested in talking to you about consulting possibly uh, with me and my company and my organization, um, you're more than welcome. Once again, reach out to me on Instagram at the Lawrence Malloy, and we can, uh, hop on a quick phone call and see if there can be some synergy and see if it's a fit, but I guarantee there's a lot of money that is, uh, unrealized that's in your current business. Okay. Uh, and most people <laughs> just kind of going off a tangent real quick. Most people, they think like, Oh, I want to make more money. I need to, you know, do a different business. I need to go from wholesaling. I need to do rehabbing. I need to go from rehabbing. I need to do multifamily. I need to go do commercial. I need to do all this stuff. And the reality is, is your next million dollars is in your current business. I'm going to say that more time. Your next million dollars is in your current business. You're just not going deeper or wide enough in your current business to understand it all in order to really realize that next million dollars. You need some, you, you need some guidance and some support to say, hey, what about this? Look at this. I've been there. I When I did this, this is what happened. You should think about this or try looking at this or let me see this. And up, oh, I see there's something that, that you're forgetting right here. And that's how you really grow a business. And that's how you get better as a CEO and as a leader is by really understanding all the little nuances with your current business and just not out there chasing shiny object, thinking that your market's not good or this other thing isn't good, or maybe rehabbing's not for you, you need to do wholesale, like all of that is just a bunch of BS, okay? Um, so if you're interested, reach out to me and we can go over that a little bit more and see if there could be a potential fit for us to work together. Uh, she also, Michelle, she also oversees human resources, um, compliance, ensures that company files all local and federal laws, creates and maintains uh, SOP, standard operating procedures for all departments, schedule office trips, company holiday parties, birthdays, et cetera, uh, maintain employee files, track and PTO time, pay rate, pay schedule, schedule interviews, onboarding of new employees. There's just a litany of things that this executive assistant can do as they get up and running that you're not even realizing just because you're not there yet. But when you start realizing this in revenue, you will realize, holy crap, there is so many different things I'm not even thinking of uh, that the sooner you hire someone, the sooner you can get to start scaling your business. Okay. Um, so having an executive assistant serves as the backbone of any successful organization and their contributions are invaluable. As I just went over, I don't know, 50 different things that my assistant does more than that. Um, uh, even just as we write them out, there's so many different little subtopics of each one of those things that you have to oversee. So they streamline operations, oversee research and due diligence. They make sure the company has effective communication, manages relationships, and uh, they play uh, with, they maintain the relationship with team members, clients, vendors, potential investors. They play crucial roles in the internal communication within our organization, our team members, oversee project management, and then essentially the right ex executive assistant is essentially invaluable. And I tell Michelle this all the time. Michelle, she's not, you think everyone is money motivated and that's just not the case. There's a lot of people that are in not great situations where they work at right now. And company culture is a huge thing that people will buy into, you know, and I pour into Michelle all the time. Um, and she's, she's not as money motivated as she is, wanting to have be a part of a great organization and have proper leadership so even when i incentivize her my incentivize isn't like hey michelle i'm going to give you a raise most of the time it's like hey you know what's important to her and how can i serve her to where i'm doing something that actually means something so she likes to go on vacation with her and her husband 
And so there's been a, a few times where I've sent her on vacation and I've paid for it. Not a problem. Like it's more than, uh, it's, she more than deserves it based on all the different things that she does within this organization. If there's something that's important to her with her daughter, I'll try to help take care of that, whatever it is. Um, and that's what you have to figure out is as people, as you bring people on in your organization, you have to figure out what's important to them. Uh, because I guarantee you, it's not always money. There's other things that are important. And when you figure that out, that's how you can show up as the very best leader uh, and understand who your team members are. Uh, I try to wrap this up fairly quickly because I know uh, Tanji gave me a hard stop at seven. We're a couple minutes over, but I can answer some questions because she hasn't stopped me just yet. So uh, let me see if there's any questions. How many people work in your organization? Right now I have eight people, Brock. So um, between me, executive assistant, project manager, uh, a couple of acquisition reps, a sales manager, uh, my bookkeeper, executive assistant. Um, who else do I have? Uh, sales manager. So about eight people. And I run a, a highly scaled out business with multiple real estate businesses. So it's just not this wholesale. I mean, it's not a rehab operation. We have... Uh, rehab, some wholesale, some wholesale, long-term rentals, short-term rentals, uh, real estate investors association. I have this consulting program. So there's different things that I do, but once again, we run a lean, mean ship. I like most important to me is, uh, running lean and putting more profit in my pocket and less money out to random expenses that are not necessary. Okay. It's, at the end of the day, everyone wants to talk about, oh, I did this, I did that. It's like, how much money are you putting in your pocket? And are you going deep in your PL and looking and seeing where all that money is going to and really understanding it? So really, really important. Do you use AI software tools to automate anything? I do not at this time. However, I do think that automation is a huge thing. And I assume mean, AI is a huge thing. Automation, we have some things that are automated, but not AI automated. But obviously, I think that's a big part of the future. And no matter what business you're in, AI is going to affect your business. And as the time comes, because I still think that there's just so many different tools right now, as the time comes, I'm sure we'll start implementing, but we're just not using a lot at this moment in time outside of like chat GPT that allows me to cheat on some things if I have to write something up or a blog or something like that. But most of the time, I honestly like original content because people understand that it's real and it's coming from a place of experience and it's coming from a place of insight versus information, which the difference is information just gives you a theory of things. Insight says, hey, I've taken that information, I've applied it, but based on that, this, this, that could be an issue. And that's based on my insight because I've utilized that stuff. So I know Tangie's on here. She got to go throw some darts and, you know, do some things or whatever. So once again, if you guys want to get in touch with me, uh, I'm at the Lawrence Malloy on Instagram. And it's been an absolute pleasure to hang out with you guys tonight. And hopefully you guys took some stuff away. If you like what you guys heard, feel free to drop me a note uh, on Instagram. And I look forward to uh, connecting with you guys sometime soon. Wow, what a lot of information packed into a small 45, 55 minute window. Thank you so much for all your content. Guys, this is going to be replayed tomorrow on YouTube. So you can rewind him, fast forward him, watch him over and over and over. Take a screenshot at the Lawrence Malloy. You can go to his GoRia meeting. Guys, we've had people fly in for real estate meetings all the time. Lawrence has a meeting every single month. It's the fourth Thursday of every month in Altamont Springs. It's GoRia. Um, you can't watch it online anymore, guys. You have to go in person, but I can tell you it's worth the fly. It's worth the drive. It's worth the wait. They, they have one of the best meetings out there. Lawrence, thanks for taking your time out. We look forward to having you on again uh, next year. Thank you. Appreciate you, Tanji, and appreciate everyone hanging out with me tonight. Talk to you soon. Have a great night. Bye, everybody.